Morrison from United for Social Justice for the Utah Minutemen Project. You claim to care about the crime caused by immigrants, but if so, why do you support the criminalization of immigrants to make it more difficult for them to contact and cooperate with law enforcement? Crime's a choice. A person chooses to do that, so it doesn't matter where they're from. Uh, when you're talking about crimes caused by immigrants, what I like to know is a clarifying point. Are you talking about an unlawful person or a lawful person? Well, I mean, that's a different question. I think all people are uh, lawful. But uh, let's say someone who's violated uh, uh, the, the current uh, U, uh, U.S. immigration law. Let's say that. Okay. When a person chooses to uh, come into a country uh, illegally, it's a personal choice. They know the consequences of it. When what he's asking here is it difficult for them to contact and cooperate with law enforcement? The laws are in place now, or laws are being proposed now, such as in Senate Bill, or not Senate Bill, House Bill 70, which is Stephen Sandstrom's bill, that has a special provision that the officer, upon either arresting or citing a person, uh, has a prerogative if that person or other people come to be either a witness or have reported the crime that the officer is not to ask them their citizenship status at all. You will find this um, in his bill. You will find that also, that same provision uh, from the last uh, week in New Mexico when the governor of New Mexico uh, said that uh, it's okay for officers to ask citizenship status except if the person is a witness or is reporting the crime. So you see that these protections are in here. There are any bill, Missouri, uh, Georgia is running the bill, Texas is running the bill, uh, Missouri has run it, and also Oklahoma has run it. So those laws have been in effect for over two to three years, and they have those provisions protecting these people. So it's not to say that it's criminalizing the person. I just I have a real problem with this. Do you support the criminalization of immigrants? Because I don't support their crimes. Now, if I could for me, they would be gone. And there wouldn't be any opportunity to call them or criminalize them. So that's my comment on criminalization of immigrants. I, they criminalize themselves by breaking the law. You're absolutely right. It is a personal choice. It's a choice between going and living and staying and dying. And any sort of law that forces people into that sort of choice is deeply, deeply immoral. Yes, of course, we hear about the, the good, the quote unquote good immigrant who manages to go through the long and arduous legal process to get here. Um, and again, it was mentioned earlier, you know, the cartels charge way more than the visa process. But it's not about money, it's about time. It's about how long can your family survive on what you have, or in the case of uh, Mexicans, don't have. So in this case, uh, I mean, you say they'd be gone. Well, I think that's a deplorable position. Essentially, you would condemn uh, hundreds, if not thousands of people and their family receiving remittances to death, to starvation, to lack of medical care. And for me, that's far more important than any law uh, to increase the comfort of Americans. Utah Minutemen Project to United for Social Justice. The question is, what is the central point that is common in all illegal migration issues around the world? I'm going to add slightly to that because Michael Sanchez presented earlier and said one central point is a connection with organized crime. I would say another central point would be uh, the problems that exist in their countries. And again, as Greg pointed out in his 10-minute uh, comments, many, many, many of those problems are a result of U.S. foreign policy. Uh, El Salvador is a good example. In the 1980s, the United States supported um, uh, one of the most murderous campaigns um, that I, I can even think of. Um, that I'm aware of against the people of El Salvador backing the right-wing military dictatorship there. 
uh, right in the military dictatorship with the support of US advisors committed some of the most horrible atrocities that, that you can imagine. And that devastated that country. And as a result, many of those people um, came to the United States. A lot of them came on visas at the time or had refugee or political asylum status. But when that ran out, it was too dangerous for them to go home. The poverty was too bad. There was still a lot of political violence. And they would have been killed if they would have gone home. So they ended up staying here. So again, the, pro the reason that immigrants come here is because of massive problems in their countries. And again, we have a moral responsibility to help these people in those cases when we, our government, is directly responsible for their misery and the terrible problems that they're experiencing. And again, uh, this is a real life problem. Uh, just real quick, I mean, we're in the United States, so we're talking about Latin America. But if we were in the EU, we would be talking about German uh, and uh, European Union destabilization of the Near East and North Africa. You can see, uh, right, for example, the Dutch uh, Royal Shell Corporation, uh, which commits genocide routinely in Africa. You have uh, the UK, who had dominated and disrupted all the, you know, uh, basically they control uh, a good chunk of the world. And now those regimes also are complaining that the people that they have harmed are returning to ask for just a subsistence uh, existence. The reason we're talking about Latin America today and not about the crimes of the UK and you and Japan is because we don't live there. Um, if I lived there, I would be talking about those, and instead of Mexican kings, we'd be talking about Turks. The Utah Minimum Project can have one minute and 15 seconds to respond. I reject the proposition that the United States is responsible for anything and everything evil that happens in Latin America or in Mexico. We do not have moral, quote, unquote, moral responsibility that isn't, hasn't been clearly defined as to what that is, I, I don't believe. So, I have no doubt that had Mexico, the power that the United States has, state has, states has, or any other country, and the shoe were on the other foot, I don't think that you find the same level of outrage and indignation coming from our adversaries relative to the poor plight of the Americans. As a matter of fact, we saw precisely that in the early years of our, uh, of our uh, nationhood. And nobody had any sympathy for the Americans. We just had to deal with what we had to deal with and move on. So this whole idea about the United States has moral responsibility and that we, we need to be on the lookout to make sure that we can pander to and help and assist everybody and their dog just because they happen to feel like they're exploited or happen to be exploited and, and also the fact that American citizens themselves are responsible for the actions of foreign corporations, international corporations, I think is absurd. <laughs>